Basically, what you need to build a JavaFX application to play with Raspberry Pi. Actually, it's not about Raspberry Pi, it's about JavaFX period and only. Because uh, all the connectivity will be through REST API, right? So it doesn't matter if your application is running on Raspberry or desktop. But there are a few things that you need to adjust to make your JavaFX application to run on a Raspberry Pi. To build an application doesn't matter. To run, there are a few things that you need to do. We're going to go through a little things. So um, you guys have um, probably NetBeans. If you don't have, that's fine. Because uh, the JavaFX scene builder, it's a separated application to design the JavaFX UI. So it's like a drag and drop application. And it's Linux supported right now. It's, the version is 1.1. So if you plan to build a JavaFX UI, go to the bit.ly slash JavaFX download. That's the link to the JavaFX scene builder page. So you can download this pretty cool application here. You can just drag and drop the components through the board. This will generate an FXML file, and then you can load this F FXML file in your JavaFX application. It's like building an HTML5 application, okay? But the runtime is JavaFX, not the browser, right? Okay, here comes the things about Raspberry Pi. Points. One, CPU overclock. That's needed. So whenever you run Raspi config, you can overclock to the minimum should be like 900 megahertz. Okay? You can run for 950, but uh, I don't recommend to run over one gigabyte. Because uh, then the SD card might burn. <laughs> okay? We don't want you to spend your time reinstalling the SD card all over again. All right, so keep the clock between 900 and 950. The memory split is also necessary because uh, this, this, here's a pretty cool thing about, uh, about JavaFX. It doesn't use the X windows on Linux. It sends the data, the, the, the video data, directly through the frame buffer to the GPU. So you don't need the operational system, the desktop system of Linux, okay? But we need to do the memory split and give more memory to the video processor so it can work with the JavaFX application. We do a memory split of 128 megabytes. And also define hard-coded in the Raspberry Pi configuration the frame buffer size. So you're gonna, it's like setting up the resolution of your monitor. So you're gonna edit this in a text file on Raspberry Pi and give it that option. So CPU overclock, it's pretty easy. You just run raspi-config with sudo. If you want the, the whole documentation, uh, exact, actually this is not a documentation, it's an article that explains a lot of things. So you can go to bit.ly slash raspi overclock. And that, that will give you a lot of explanations on things and why you should not run on one gigahertz. Okay, unless it's gonna burn the SD card. To do the memory, uh, the, the CPU overclock, it will bring this configuration interface. You just go to overclock option, and, and then you select a few options already available. You can tune that by hand, but it's better to just use the predefined configurations. We just select the high option, which is 950 megahertz. Okay. Split. What we do is we run again Raspi config, select the option memory split, and 108 is the best performance for video. 64 might work, okay? Depends on how heavy will be your application, how many nodes, and this is a JavaFX term, how many components in your JavaFX application. That might be, uh, a performance issue if you run a, a very heavy application over 64. So you select memory split, and then you just tell Raspi, hey, give uh, the video core 128 megabytes or 64. But the default is 16. It would never run, <laughs> okay? Just console at this size. Integration to run this application, JavaFX application on Raspberry Pi, 
you have to edit the config.txt in under slash boot slash. This file will set up, in this file you're gonna set up the frame buffer size, the width and the height. So it's like the resolution of your monitor. After these three configurations, you are ready to go. Just restart your Raspberry Pi and you are ready to run JavaFX applications. Okay? You don't have to run Linux X Windows desktop. You just need to start the Java application like you have been doing for the last 10 years. Java hyphen jar and then your application. Okay? This, here's a hint. When you run JavaFX application on Raspberry Pi, it comes on full screen already, obviously. There's no desktop behind, right? So there's no exit option. You have to code a handler, a key handler, or in Java SE 8, there is a variable. You can do Java underscores debug equals one, and this will enable a key handler for you. Control C will kill the application. Or you can just connect through secret shell and queue Java. All right, that works too. Final parameters for JavaFX on Raspberry Pi. If you don't need a virtual keyboard, which probably you guys will not need, you need to add this parameter here. Okay, it's minus D, con dot sun, JavaFX is embedded. It's like a tricky. We're gonna tell Raspberry Pi that it is not on an embedded device, so it won't come up ever with the virtual keyboard. Unless you want that, then you just leave this on default, which is true for JavaFX on Raspberry Pi. But this one is required. It tells JavaFX that it is running on Raspberry Pi and to run the output to the frame buffer. So you add this parameter here always. 